Hey, what's up guys? Riverman here coming at you with a different kind of video today. I decided that I'm going to do a short little review of the trailer that I use to transport my kayaks. It is a right on multi-sport trailer. So let's go ahead and get into it and start out with the pros and we'll get to the cons and give a nice overview of what this trailer has been like for me over the past uh, six, seven months. So one of the biggest advantages of this trailer is that it's super light. So that means it's super easy to store in places that you can kind of wheel the trailer into and not have to back it in somewhere. Um, where I keep it during the season and during the off season, I have to wheel it in through a gate and that just simply isn't ever a problem for me in terms of weight, even with kayaks on there, even with gear on there, it's super easy to maneuver around. It's short enough to where it's, you know, doesn't cause too many problems. Um, and it's not super wide, so you can kind of sneak it in in some smaller spaces, which is one thing I definitely like about this trailer. So another thing I really like about this trailer is the fact that you can fit two wide fishing kayaks side by side on the crossbars. Now the crossbars are 64 inches according to the Ride On Trailer website, um, but my kayaks uh, are both over 30 inches wide and they fit without issue. My topwater PDL is by far the widest. My Hobie Compass is not as wide, but still fairly wide, and I can fit those side by side without any issue. I have also stacked two kayaks on top of one another, um, and that works just fine for shorter distances. Another option is you can get the kayak holders for a roof rack for a car that kind of sit at an angle and have your kayak sitting that way, one of them at least, and then you can put your other kayak sitting flat uh, on its bottom side. I've never had to do that, but I know that is an option. And the 64 inch width allows you to do that or allows you to do a lot of different configurations if you're looking to um, transport your kayaks in a different way because of their size. The third thing that I really like about this kayak trailer is just overall its size. It's only 11 feet long. Like I said, it's, the crossbars are 64 inches wide and that's the longest part of the trailer. So this trailer really can be wheeled into spaces where you wouldn't normally think of storing a trailer. Um, it would fit pretty well in a garage and wouldn't take up much space. I personally wheel it through a gated area into a backyard space and keep it on a concrete slab and maneuvering it through, you know, smaller spaces where you wouldn't be able to get a normal size trailer in uh, has been really nice and it allows me to store it in places that really you can't store a normal huge boat trailer. And because of its size, the trailer really isn't that bad to back in. Um, of course, Backing in a trailer is a skill that you have to learn and there's nothing really special about this trailer. Um, because of its small size, it does like to turn a little bit uh, quickly, uh, but once you get the hang of that, it's really not that hard to back into the water, offload your kayak, drop your gear, and then get it right out of there. And really the best part about that small size and the maneuverability is that it's easy to get it into parking spots that other trailers just simply can't fit into. Um, I've had to parallel park it in small small spaces on the street and at boat ramps and i've really never had an issue with it and i'm glad that it's only 11 feet long in addition to my car it gives me the maneuverability in terms of parking that i really like to have so lastly and most importantly price price was one of the main reasons why i bought this trailer it's super affordable in comparison to um, a lot of the kayak trailers that you'd see on a website like e-trailer like malone brand where Minimum you're spending twelve thirteen fourteen hundred dollars and really the nicer trailers are going up into the two three thousand dollar range I just simply didn't want to spend that amount of money for hauling plastic boats So uh, the ride on trailer comes in at under nine hundred dollars It's six hundred something plus shipping which comes out to about eight hundred and fifty dollars depending on where you are in the country and really to me That's not a bad price um, especially because they ship it to your door. It's really easy to assemble. So overall price is not a huge issue considering that it costs less than both of my kayaks. Now let's get to the negatives, the cons. First and foremost, this trailer stock right out of the box is super loud. The leaf springs, they bounce and you're supposed to tie them down per the instructions. If you don't do that, man, you can hear this trailer coming from down the street literally and wake up the entire neighborhood in the morning. I'm not kidding you. So because of the noise, I went ahead and modified the trailer. I bought these basically vibration dampeners um, that I slipped over the bolt that runs through the leaf springs. Um, so that way when the leaf springs want to move, there's actually that piece of rubber that's keeping them uh, from bouncing up and down. It was a little hard to get it in there just because of the size, but what happened is it basically keeps the leaf springs from bouncing up and down and that's what the cause of the noise was. So I've effectively dampened that noise and cut it out as best I could. 
So another thing that I've noticed that I don't really like about this trailer, and part of this is probably on me, but the rear crossbar actually started to tilt back a little bit. And so it got to the point where it was actually beneath the wheel well. So really, in my opinion, the racks are too close um, in terms of height to the wheel well. Um, and they don't give you enough clearance to be comfortable just setting your kayak up there. Now, thankfully with foam blocks or something else, your kayak usually sits above it. It's not sitting on the wheel well, but I feel a lot more secure uh, when my kayaks are just resting on the crossbars nicely above any other part of the trailer. So all I did is I loosened that part up. I made sure that that rear crossbar was standing straight up to give me the max amount of clearance that I could. And then I just retightened it. So I'm not sure if that's something that's gonna keep happening. It may just be an issue with not being tight enough. Uh, but that's one thing you definitely want to keep in mind if you do get this trailer and put it together is that that rear crossbar does have a tendency to kind of roll back with the pressure that you're applying on it uh, from your strapping system or however you secure your kayak. Another gripe I have with this trailer is just that the paint chips off super easy. It comes in a nice glossy black paint, nice and shiny at first, but it doesn't take long for a couple trips on the road to start leading to that paint chipping off and then that inner metal to be exposed. And obviously that opens the trailer up to rust, which is not good. So one thing I do recommend for sure is putting another coat of paint, another couple coats of paint actually on this trailer in whatever color you want, just to protect it from that rust. I've done that myself, but I haven't been very good at the bottom side of the trailer. And that being that it takes the most hits from the road with rocks and debris and everything else, that has a lot of beat up paint on it and has a lot of rust. So I'm gonna get to that spraying it up, but that is one thing you definitely wanna keep in mind as you run this trailer um, over the course of the year and especially if you experience winter. So let's keep it rolling with the things that I do not like. The small tires that come on this trailer allows it to go about 65 miles an hour on the interstate or highway. And that's okay for most people, but I just simply don't drive that slow. And on the interstate around here where I live, 65 isn't gonna cut it. So I've taken that trailer uh, probably a lot faster than I should, but those small eight inch rims and a small tire on top of that, um, they're really not great for fast interstate driving and I do cr cross country trips. So what I'm going to be doing is upgrading to a 12 inch rim um, and making space so that I can run bigger tires at higher speeds and don't have to worry about a blowout on the interstate. So overall, if I had to recommend this trailer or tell you to go elsewhere, um, I would decide to tell you to buy this trailer. This thing is cheap. It's small. Uh, it's pretty easy to modify. So those factors alone were enough for me to buy this trailer and after one fishing season in i'm going to continue using it i don't have any plans to get rid of it it works well i've not had one single issue apart from the small things i've already mentioned and really with that that's all i have to say um, if you are interested in this trailer go ahead and uh, check out the link below that'll take you to the website um, and that's really all i have to say thanks for watching guys see you next time oh also this trailer is marlin approved Thank <laughs> you.